Hi family, welcome back to our devotion time. Today is March 19th and our devotion is the priority of service. From John 13, 5. After that, Jesus poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you today for this word. We thank you, Father, for being with us in this time and for teaching us about service. Lord, we thank you for inspiring our hearts with a, with a desire to serve more and more as the, la as the last days unfold. We pray, Father God, that you would give us open hearts to hear from your Holy Spirit and to receive instruction in what we should do in each of our lives individually that would make a difference in advancing the kingdom of our God. In Jesus' name, I pray that you would anoint my words today. Amen. If you knew that tonight would be your last night on earth and that your life would end painfully and tragically the next day, how would you spend the night? Assuming your fate was sealed, how would you spend your final hours? That was the decision Jesus faced. He made no attempt to alter the events he knew were coming. Nor did he spend the hours getting his affairs in order. Instead, he chose to spend his final night with his disciples, sharing a meal and encouraging them about life in his absence. But one act has come to characterize his final hours with his disciples. Jesus knelt down and bathed their dusty feet. He explained to them that he was setting an example for them to follow, John 13, 14, and 15. And he explained that leadership is marked by servanthood. Of all the things Jesus could have done on that final night, he chose to serve his disciples, a final illustration of the very purpose for his coming to earth. Mark 10, 45 and Philippians 2, 7 and 8. Jesus chose to illustrate servanthood on his final night of life. If service to others was the priority of his life, surely it should be the priority of ours. You know, I don't, think that I can add much to what our brother said here. Um, it's, it's, we've talked about it recently is why, because I've already kind of expounded to you guys on my heart about service and <clears throat> what it means. But I do want to reiterate what he said and think, I want you guys to think about how important the act of service must be coming from God's perspective. If that was what Jesus chose to, to, um, Focus in on, on his last night. That's what he chose to give us as our example. That's what he chose to pinpoint as the very thing that he wanted to leave the disciples with and that he wanted them to share with others was to serve one another, to love one another, to put others before ourselves. Amen. And if we're going to make a true impact for the body of Christ, if we're going to make a true impact for the kingdom of our God, we need to serve others that surround us. And I want us to look at these, these scriptures that he had pointed out. He pointed out Mark 10. So let's go over to Mark 10. I'm already there. And he said, verse 20, uh, 45. And it says, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So when we ask the question of ourselves in this life, what is my purpose here? What is my purpose here? It is to love God with all of our hearts, our minds, our souls, our strength, everything that we are. And it is to serve him and to serve his people. We are to serve one another. We are to love one another. Jesus came and his purpose was Part of the biggest part of his purpose was to serve us. He served us on the cross. He gave his life for us and he went around doing good. He went around healing people, reaching out in compassion to those who were hurting and served them. He served them through prayer. He served them through his actions. He served them through his words and then he served them on the cross. That is our purpose, you guys. We're not here for ourselves. We are here for our God. We are here to be his hands, his feet, his voice, his eyes, his ears. We are to extend Jesus to everyone. Amen. In whatever form or fashion, whatever shape, form or fashion that we can, we are to serve. And that comes in so many levels. Like I just said, whether it's to 
hold someone while they cry, whether it's to pray for someone, whether it's to be there financially for someone or to give them a vehicle, if it's to give them a home. Amen. I don't care what form it comes in. If it's to serve in the, the ministries at church, if it's, if it's to reach out to your neighbor when, when they need a cup of sugar or a cup of water, I don't care. It doesn't matter. We are to look for ways to give of ourselves every day and to share Jesus with people. And yes, that comes in the form of sharing our testimony or sharing the gospel. But the biggest thing we can do is love. The biggest thing that you can do every single day for the Lord is love your fellow man. Does that mean to go around and condone everything that people are believing, every lie that Satan is telling? Is that love? No, it is not. And we see that kind of love being uh, touted on our TV screens and in our social media every single day. And I'm bringing that up. I wasn't going to say anything about that. That wasn't even in my mind. But when I mention love and service, Jesus did not show love by condoning sin. Okay, that is not love. That is hatred toward your, toward your fellow man. If you're going to condone someone's sin to make them feel comfortable, that isn't loving them. Loving them is telling them you're in sin and you're falling off a cliff into the fires of hell if you keep walking down this path. That is love. Okay, and it's hard to do that because you may make an enemy. That person may be angry at you. But you know what? If you stop them from falling off that path into the fires of hell, they're going to thank you someday. They're going to come and thank you someday. I promise you that. Now let's go over here and look at one last scripture. We're going to look at Philippians. <clears throat> we already know this passage. We've read it a few times, actually, because I think what I'm noticing is a key uh, about these devotions is like each month kind of, is kind of centered around certain topics. And so we've hit this particular passage a few times this month already. Um, but it's second, it's second, I'm sorry, it's Philippians verse chapter two, I get all jumbled up and I'm going to read, um, four through eight. It says, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Amen. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. So in other words, we have the mind of Christ. So if we are walking in the spirit and not in the flesh, we're going to be putting, we're going to be thinking of how can I put others before myself? How can I help others? How can I serve others? How can I love and be like Christ to others? Because we have the mind of Christ. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ. We have the access to the mind of Christ. If we choose to walk in his way of thinking, we can. It says, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. He didn't come here and throw his weight around. He didn't come here and say, look, I created you. I don't have to tolerate this. <laughs> I'm God. He didn't say that. Oh, and he could have, and he'd have been justified. Amen. He could have looked those Pharisees and those Sadducees and the Levites and the teachers of the law and the lawyers. And he could have looked at all those uh, Greeks and, and the, the people, not the Greeks, but I mean the Romans who were, who were coming at him. He could have looked at every single one of them and said, I created you back off. Who do you think you are? I'm the word manifested in the flesh. I am God. But he didn't. He didn't because he loved. Because he loved, he said no. He did not. And so he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Hallelujah. Even death on a cross. And he wants us to follow in his footsteps and be humble put others above ourselves because the Lord, it says right here, right after that, let's just read a little further. Okay. Therefore, God, our father has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. Now, listen, when you humble yourself, the Lord will raise you up. If you try to raise yourself up, you will be humbled because pride goeth before a fall. So, you know, we love to say, well, I have the right. 
in this life. And I always tell people, I started telling people this years ago, you don't have the right, as a Christian, you have no rights. You belong to God. You gave up your right to have a right in this life when you became a servant of the Most High God because you came into covenant with him. And he says, I laid down my rights and I want you to follow my example. Because his God, he had the right. He had the ultimate right to say, back off. And call forth those angels to pull him off that cross. But because he chose to love first and give his life and suffer and die. He says, now you have life. And I want you to be willing to go all the way with me. And give up your rights and say, I humble myself before you, Father. I put this other person before myself. And I will do everything I can to live by what you have given me to live by and to always be there to serve others and to make myself available for others. And the Lord, as you do that, our Father God will lift us up. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I praise your holy name today. And Lord, I thank you so, so, so much for your wonderful love. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you did for us on the cross, for the example that you gave us. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you showed us at the last of your life here on this earth what was the most important thing, to put other people above ourselves, to not be selfish and self-centered and worry about how we were going to get what we wanted and what we wanted to get, but that, Lord God, we would give up our rights when we came into covenant because you gave us that example. You set all of your rights aside. And we glorify your holy name today. We have life eternal because you did that. So Father God, we praise your holy name and thank you, Lord, that we know, we, we know we'll get the blessings that come to us as you give them, not as we seek them out. And that we'll humble ourselves and put ourselves last so that you can put us first. We won't toot our own horns, Lord. We won't go around patting our own shoulders, patting our backs, rubbing our shoulders and and saying what a good job we did. But Lord, we'll humble ourselves and realize that Lord, we're all your children and that each person we see every single day is an opportunity for us to serve and put them above ourselves. And that Father, as we do that, we please your heart. We please you. And that we're living out the covenant we have with you by loving other people. And that as we love, you love us. That we can trust the Father, you know the plans you have for us and that you will always give us plans for a hope and a future. We don't have to worry about that. We don't have to grasp for that, Father God. And we praise you today for that fact. We praise you that all of everything you show us about this, the fullness of of this picture that you've given us through the life of of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. We praise you and thank you for that. We thank you that we have his life to look to because otherwise we wouldn't know how to live in this life. And I pray that you'll help every single one of us to see the opportunities you bring for the good works you've already prepared for us to do. Just as we learned about last week, those, those, those good works you prepared for us to do are your will for our lives. That is why we're here. That is part of why we're here. Help us to live that out every day, Lord. And we give you all praise and all glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys, I love you. And listen, I want to tell you something. Please be praying for two of our sisters. Um, Vanessa and Misty, they uh, are have both been in the hospital, and I won't go into details about their health issues. That's not my place, but please, please, please pray for our sisters' healings. Amen. Because both of them have been suffering, and they're both precious, and I love them very much. And I hope you'll join me in praying for Vanessa. And for Misty. Okay. I love you guys. 
Thank you so much for helping me share the gospel and just for being here with me and, and for listening to what I have to say every day. I truly appreciate it. It humbles me that you're with me every day. And I love you guys so much. Please be blessed and please, please be safe. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.